Hello and welcome to another episode of the Insight Podcast. My name is Sydney Stewart and I'm the lead America's analyst at Sybil Line. Today I'm joined by our associate analyst on the North America desk, Claire Brady. Thank you, Sydney. Great to be here. But before we get into our discussion, I would like to flag that we have separated our podcast reporting. We have the Insight Podcast for long form and our What Just Happened podcast for short form. Um, all the links can be found below in the bio. And we are coming to you on a very special day. It is not only the 4th of July, it is also Elections Day in the UK. Um, but the weird thing is, Claire, you and I as Americans, we're not allowed to vote, no. which uh, despite the fact that we pay taxes, so it sounds a hell of a lot like the uh, Boston Tea Party to me. And it is indeed very fitting that it's the 4th of July because we're going to be talking about the US presidential election today. Um, we've seen plenty of headlines in recent days suggesting that following uh, President Biden's debate performance last week, there are increasing calls for President Biden to step down as the as the candidate for the Democratic Party. So, Claire, I think we should just start off with a bit of DNC 101. Yes. Well, basically, Sydney, the Democratic National Convention is coming up on the 19th of August, and it will run through the 22nd, and this will be taking place in Chicago, Illinois. Now, we've already been watching uh, preparation for this convention very closely as it is expected to attract thousands of protesters. Um, but now we are going to be watching uh, the convention for a potential switch in candidacy. Um, President Biden swept the primaries um, and caucuses, but as you said, there are now uh, increasing calls for him to step down. So this is off the back of Biden's performance on the June 27th debate in which uh, there was widespread concern that his slow answers, um, his lack of movement, um, and kind of some of his stumbling answers signaled that he is potentially uh, too old to now be president or is not in the right um, physical and mental well-being to take on in this role. Um, and as you stated, there have been widespread calls for him to step down, including most notably two sitting House Democrats, um, some influential Democratic donors. So basically, Biden's performance yeah. has reinforced a lot of longstanding existing concerns mm -hmm. among Democratic voters yeah. and the general electorate about his age and fitness yes. for another term. Mm -hmm. So how would this look at the convention and how does the convention work? Basically, in 2024, there are 4,672 delegates. Around uh, 4,000 of these are pledged delegates, and around 800 um, are automatic delegates, known as superdelegates. Now, to win the nomination, a presidential candidate needs to receive support from a majority of the pledged can delegates. Excuse me. Um, on the first ballot, they need to win an estimated 1,968. Now, this could be contested, um, and the convention could go on to a second ballot, and in which case... Uh, the superdelegates or automatic delegates would also be allowed to vote. Um, and then the candidate must receive, again, majority support, so around 2,258 votes. Uh, previously, superdelegates were able to vote on the first ballot as well, um, but this rule changed after the 2016 election. Uh, so that is how originally things are set to play out. But as uh, you've already stated, we are uh, increasingly watching the risk that that process may look a little different this year. Mm -hmm. And Claire, this would be quite an unprecedented shift, right? Mm -hmm. um, in modern American elections, we haven't seen um, an open and competitive primary. Um, but I think there's quite a salient parallel to the election of 1968. Um, and I'm wondering if you could give us a little bit of historical context for what that also might look like now. So yes, in 1968, Lyndon B. Johnson voluntarily chose not to run for another term in office. However, this was after the primaries had already begun, um, but before he received the official nomination. Um, so then Vice President Hubert Humphrey, uh, he did not participate in the primaries, um, but he was chosen by a large majority of delegates at the convention. And this actually resulted in pretty widespread backlash um, as Humphrey never ran in the primary and the people felt that they were not represented um, and their choice was not what was uh, being chosen. Um, and in response to that, the party actually changed its rules. And that is how we now have today's primary system that rewards candidates based on their performance um, on those primary and caucus ballots. So, Claire, while 
1968 might be an interesting parallel, particularly with the anti-war protests and the fact that there was rioting outside of that DNC, which was also in Chicago. Yes. Um, we are in very unprecedented territory because, as you mentioned, um, even in, in this case, LBJ stood down in March, a much earlier on in the election cycle. Um, we are obviously just a couple months out from the election in November. Things are already intensifying. We have scheduled debates for the, the two candidates. Um, and I think also there, there's an expectation among the modern American electorate and also political establishment that the primaries do dictate the, the, you know, the anointing of the candidate. Mm -hmm. Um, so what are we looking for at the DNC? What sort of movement are we going to be looking for to signal, okay, we're seeing a shift in favor of an alternate candidate and who that candidate might be? At the time that we are recording this, Biden is set to do a televised interview on uh, tomorrow, July 5th, um, in which there's increasing speculation that he may use this platform to indeed announce his withdrawal from the candidacy. However, if Biden does not announce his withdrawal tomorrow during the televised interview, there is still a possibility that he takes uh, an occasion on another day um, to indeed announce uh, his withdrawal. Um, in this case, it is likely that he would signal his preference for another candidate. However, even in this case, the DNC convention rules do not ad uh, directly address what happens if a candidate with the most pledged delegates drops out. Mm -hmm. But the general understanding is that pledged delegates are free to support another candidate. So as I said, if Biden signals his preference for another candidate, this would carry a lot of weight for those delegates uh, to vote that way at the convention. However, another caveat, um, there is also a potential virtual roll call vote happening uh, potentially around August 7th. Um, this was originally established because the state of Ohio um, had an earlier deadline for candidates to be verified. Um, and while Ohio has uh, extended this deadline, uh, the DNC so far has indicated that they still plan to go forward with this roll call vote. Um, and this will give us a signal and indication of where these delegates are going uh, to fall. And we will be looking at that as a major indicator of how the convention itself is going to play out. So it's possible that if, for example, Biden announces that he will step down in the coming days, there might be a lot of in the coming, you know, couple weeks through the end of July and into early August, a lot of behind the scenes jockeying, horse trading within within the party among senior officials, elected and party officials who might essentially try to um, gain a consensus already within the party about who that successor might be. Yes. But as you indicated, it's not locked down. Right. Mm -hmm. So those delegates are not pledged. So it's possible that we might see a bunch of Democrats put their hands up and say, I'm running. Exactly. Yes. So delegates are not uh, in an ironclad commitment to vote for Biden. Technically, they are only obliged um, by their own good conscience to vote for him, um, meaning that we could see, you know, a sort of forceful takeover situation at the convention in which, as you said, behind the scenes, someone else had, has jockeyed for votes um, and we end up getting a contested convention. Um, although I will say that that is highly um, unprecedented and, you know, there has never been a case of wide scale support uh, from delegates going to another candidate. Um, and it's also important to note that candidates actually have the right to review um, and make changes to their slate of delegates uh, that go to the convention in each state, mm -hmm. which ensures that these delegates are loyal. Um, so. If Biden or whoever is the uh, candidate, if it is changed before the convention, um, could do a little maneuvering to uh, more closely ensure that they receive the nomination. So, Claire, I think the question on everybody's mind is who are the front runners to replace Biden if he steps down? Right now, we are looking at three leading candidates, the first being Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, right now, uh, there are large there's widespread reports that if Biden were to step down, he would uh, likely endorse her um, over a potential other candidate. For example, uh, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. 
um, as well as California Governor Gavin Newsom. Both of these uh, individuals have kind of seen to be growing in popularity in the Democratic Party, and it is already thought that both of them would be running for president um, in the next election, couple election cycles anyway, so they do seem to be uh, great candidates. There are a couple others, um, such as Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker, um, Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg, um, but again, as I said, really the front runners we're looking at right now are Gretchen Whitmer and Gavin Newsom. So if we're looking to th- these two governors, they've certainly both signaled their long-term ambitions for national politics. Of course, we had um, Gavin Newsom, my governor from California, um, debating uh, Ron DeSantis last year in a quite uh, notable public display. And of course, Gretchen Whitmer just released a book and has done some some public interviews in the last few weeks even. Mm-hmm. So definitely um, they're in the spotlight and they are also individuals who might be able to mobilize um, public support and also potentially ca- campaign finance in a relatively rapid way, given that they are quite public, quite established figures with also high levels of name ID, which is also influential. Exactly. And I think it's important to note my own governor, Gretchen Whitmer, is head of a very key swing state in this election, and there is thought that she might be uh, someone that is able to deliver Michigan to the Democrats, um, as well as kind of um, regain support from the Arab American community, um, which has become, you know, increasingly disenfranchised from the Biden administration um, since the onset of the Israel Hamas war, as there is a very large Arab American community in Michigan. So we've covered what happens if Biden steps down in the near future and also what happens at the convention. But what are we looking at if Biden does not stand down, gets the nomination at the DNC as previously anticipated? Mm -hmm. What are we looking at if he's unable to run or chooses to step down later in the race? Yes. So in this instance, um, the Democratic National Committee uh, conferring with the most major Democratic leadership in Congress as well as all of the uh, Democratic governors would essentially confer, get together and fill that vacancy themselves. Um, Now, there are still issues in this case um, that they might run into, uh, such as ballot access deadlines. Um, We might be looking at some issues in switching the candidate. Um, And it's also just very little time to organize a campaign for whoever that new candidate is, as well as crucially raising the funds needed um, to launch a campaign um, and really get their name and policy platform out there. So I think that will help assuage anybody's questions about what happens, not only if he steps down later in the race, but also if he meets an unlikely demise and does not make it to election day. Yes, exactly. It is the same process. The Democratic leadership in Congress, um, as well as the governors um, and the Democratic National Committee would again meet and fill that vacancy. Um, But of course, any such instance in which the candidate has received the nomination and then cannot run would greatly raise um, government stability risks and election integrity risks. And we would most likely be looking at uh, widespread concern among the electorate that they are not being fairly represented in in this election. Mm -hmm. And it would be highly likely that they would choose Vice President Kamala Harris as the successor in that case if it happens in the run-up to election. Yes, in that instance, um, it does become likely that Harris is the presidential nominee as she would have already um, obtained the vice presidential nomination. Um, So there would have been um, some precedent or she would have already had to gain Um, you know, votes and get established that way. So it would be the easiest route for her to just step Mm -hmm. in. So we've gotten pretty wonky here. We've aired into political punditry a little bit, though I think it's quite substantial in this case. Um, I think it's very important for us to emphasize what the core implications for the security environment um, and general stability are. You touched on a couple of them, but could we go into a little bit more detail about how For example, a contested convention will impact security in Chicago um, and then looking to Election Day. Uh, Yes. So at the DNC, we are already expecting um, up to thousands of largely pro-Palestine protesters. Um, The DNC may also attract other groups such as um, groups advocating for access to abortion, uh, climate activists um, and the like. 
However, if there are indications that the nomination is not going to go to Biden or the DNC will be contested in some way, um, this may attract pro-Trump activists um, as well as far-right elements, um, therefore increasing the risk of protest clashes um, as well as raising the risk of a sole perpetrator um, attack. Certainly as we look to Election Day, um, basically there's a high correlation between the increasing level of unpredictability in the election um, and the high social and political tensions that might actually provide you know, more fodder for people to become more passionate, potentially even more radicalized if we're thinking about sole perpetrator attacks. Exactly. So a continued concern about election denialism, election integrity, uh, polling stations and the like as we, as we look to, to November 5th. Exactly. And I think it's also important uh, to note that this is not only just a physical risk, this will also likely manifest online um, with increased misinformation and disinformation campaigns. Um, as you said, more talk of conspiracy theories around a potentially illegitimate election um, and more even uh, attempts from domestic groups to uh, persuade voters or potentially closer to or on Election Day um, intimidate voters. Yeah, certainly those groups that we were seeing in, in the 2022 midterms that came out in places like Arizona to uh, defend with firearms um, ballot boxes. Exactly. Yeah, we will be watching very closely uh, the swing states as well as just key battleground districts across the U.S. for cases of what you just described. And if in the coming days uh, Biden does step down, we'll be sure to follow this up with additional reporting and also keep an eye on the What Just Happened, a stream of podcasts for Sibylline, where we will cover the event as it unfolds. Thank you so much to Claire for joining me today. Thank you. Um, that's it for this episode. Um, please be sure to like and subscribe on all relevant channels, and we will continue to publish additional reporting, particularly our event risk assessment on the Republican National Convention, which was published this week. We'll also be doing one ahead of the Democratic National Convention, as well as our elections monthlies and also live briefings every month. And if you have any inquiries regarding our reporting, please email info at sibyline.co.uk.